Good evening. How are you? Well, it's now 103 degrees in Virginia. <laughs> it doesn't seem to be getting better yet. And the humidity was terrible. When you were walking around, you felt like you were in a steam bath, so it's pretty bad. So, But I thought I'd spend a few minutes with you talking about what uh, has been going on today. Uh, you may remember that I suggested some questions, forensic questions, I would be interested in if I were conducting an investigation of the uh, attack on uh, Trump the other day. And one of the questions I had was about the injury he suffered. Because, I, and I don't know what gauge we're talking about, but a bullet that comes that close to an ear to cause any damage would cause a lot more damage, in my opinion. Now, you know, there are always exceptions to every rule. And there has been talk that the damage to Trump's uh, right ear is as a result of the bullet passing near his ear. But there's also talk that it was one of the shattered devices that they use when speaking a teleprompter. And so, I think it's an important question to ask because this is a guy who exaggerates everything. And just to be truthful about it, no doctor has disclosed anything. And today I posted a request by some journalists who are asking for the down and dirty on what actually was happening. You know, was, is there going to be any kind of uh, plastic surgery or anything like that? Why would I care about this? I care about it because the false hero aspects of Trump in the past echo down the canyon of time <laughs> to today. Uh, and we just have too many data points. So maybe that's a little more frivolous. But when somebody pretends to be a conquering hero and to compare themselves to Teddy Roosevelt, I think it bears inspection, particularly since We've seen in the past, in fact, he's been convicted of doing things to help him get elected uh, to conceal his associations with uh, women that would be embarrassing. So uh, I think it's a valid question. And he's at a national convention and he has a thing over his ear that people are questioning. And so more and more, I think, we'll ask a question about that. The other question is why nobody stopped this. Um, and there's a report today that they had 47 or 46 seconds between receiving notice and the shooting occurring. But from the, some of the bystanders that were interviewed the first day, it sounded different than that. So, okay, so I'll put off my gumshoe uh, personality for the time being. There are a couple of interesting things today, good things that have, have, have happened. We are all concerned about the Supreme Court trying to make the law uh, something like, you can be king, uh, and you are immune from anything that happens. So what do we do about that? Well, we push back on it. And uh, Biden, our president, has been consulting with legal and other experts, and he's putting together a package that is the answer to the era of the Supreme Court. I think that's a tremendous plus. I think that fits who he is. I think that, he, that fits what we need as a nation. And we have to have law that makes sense. And if there was any proposition that was clear, and if you will, self-evident, it was that we are all equal, that no one is greater than anyone else. And a king is not equal. A king is superior and floats above the world that the rest of us inhabit. And so, Number one, uh, Biden is going to look at remedies to the constitutional disaster, frankly, we are suffering, which is a compromise of one of the three departments of government. Some might say the most important, but clearly at least equally important with the executive and with the legislative or the courts. And when we see things like what happened in Florida, a judge whom I refer to as loose cannon throwing out a documents case because of a BS description of how our special counsel was appointed, you know there's something, you might say rotten in Denmark, but I am rotten in D.C., rotten in Florida. There's, you know, I think of John Dean's, there's a cancer on the presidency. There's a cancer on this nation right now, and we have to deal with it. We dealt with it during Nixon. We should have been more severe then. We should have maintained uh, 
the changes that we uh, implemented to, to protect us from another Nixon coming along. And if we had done that, well, that's water under the bridge. We can't be concerned about that. Another piece of good news that I would like to share that you may know about is Biden gave a, an outstanding speech to the National Association, uh, to NAACP, and uh, he was well received. It went on for a long time. That is to say, uh, it took some bigger uh, to, to implore my uh, distant cousins in the New England area, it took bigger to uh, to give the speech, and I'm sure that it was easy for him in this sense. The, the crowd was with him. They were strong for him. He was very well treated, and what he had to say was a bomb, B-A-L-M, to those who have suffered the fear that we don't care anymore about equality among us all without regard to race, illness, uh, sex, uh, any of these uh, items that should be disregarded. And in a nation that is protecting itself against those who would make it a theocracy, <laughs> we have religions that don't believe in what their scriptures say. It's a, it's a bizarre world. I think that the center can hold. I think Biden is fighting like mad to bring it to that point. I was upset to hear uh, talk on uh, MSNBC by the uh, uh, Rajan Cajun that uh, people are going to push, push Biden again. What to get off the ticket and for whom and wh for what circumstance? And it drives me crazy. They talk about the spread in polls, and the polls are not definitive now, but they're not, they're not out of control. And I like going to 538 ABC's uh, poll because they introduce other factors that hopefully correct for some of the problems of taking any polling these days. In any case, politicians always say the only poll that counts is the one on election day, and there's some truth to that. But we have a distance between now and that date, and we have to take care of it. My sense of the, conven of the uh, convention that is being held by the Republicans is that it's, <laughs> it's in search of an identity. Uh, they're talking matters, you know, say for example, safety. I think that's the issue this evening. What are they really talking about? Persons of color, immigrants, you know, people don't think like us. We, gotta, we can't have them mixing their poison in our population. I mean, these are shades of the kind of Hitlerian uh, wet dreams that uh, he and his people had, and we have Trump and his people have them. Now he's appointed, uh, nominated uh, a vice presidential candidate who just uh, adds to the excess of what is not fair and right. So in my wandering thoughts, what am I saying tonight? I'm saying that uh, our nation is in a fight for its governing principles. It's fighting to restore the republic. It's fighting to have that base so it can go forward with the kinds of dreams that any decent government seeks after. It seeks to have a government that represents all the people and that all the people are involved and there are no people that fly above it. Senator Menendez from New Jersey was convicted today uh, he's a man who did a lot of good in his life, but he also, well, did a lot of bad. And he's, you know, the old thing about you don't do the crime if you can't do the time. He's going to get some time out of this, and there's going to be appeals and so forth. But his case and the way it's been handled is closer to what we expect any party in a case to get. And when you compare it with what's happened with Trump, these are two different worlds. So for, for fear of who he is and what he represents, uh, if, if that is what has propelled him, we have to stop that nonsense right now. And it may start with finding out that that was no bullet that whizzed past his right ear. And uh, I hope tomorrow we'll have more good news in polling and other things. Uh, I think uh, we have to struggle to preserve and protect this nation with all its flaws and remedy those in the future in ways that Trump never would do. 
So, like I've said before, I'm for the good man, not the con man. And uh, I don't know what's going to happen with the temperature tomorrow. But uh, if I can, I'll be out walking at some time. And if not, I'll continue to uh, find a place uh, <laughs> in my home office and talk to you from there. All the best. Bye-bye.